next week. It's May.
The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. O be joyful in God, all ye lands, alleluia. Sing ye praises to the honor of his name, alleluia. Make his praise to be exceeding glorious, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Say unto God, O how wonderful art thou in thy works, O Lord. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies be found liars unto thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. O be joyful in God, all ye lands. Alleluia. Sing ye praises to the honor of his name. Alleluia. Make his praise to be exceeding glorious. Alleluia. 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 Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and, and on earth, earth peace, good will towards, towards men. We, we praise, praise thee, we bless thee, thee we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who showest to them that are in error the lights of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness. Grant unto all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, who in the glorious finding of thy saving cross didst renew the wonders of thy passion, grant that, by the ransom brought us by the tree of life, we may obtain election unto life eternal, who with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, livest and reignest, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle for the third Sunday after Easter is taken from the first book of St. Peter, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so it is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, 
as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord hath sent redemption unto his people. Alleluia. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to have entered into his glory. Alleluia.
Um, I would, I will be offering the mass today for our, uh, with special intention for R.J. Meyer. Please pray for R.J. and the whole Meyer family. Uh, to really use your prayers at this hour and some strong encouragement. So we offer this mass uh, with special intention for R.J. Carter, do you have anything that you would like to say? Yes, Father. Thank you. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have two thoughts for us to consider today in these perilous times, based upon the proffers for the third Sunday after Easter. The first, based on the collect and epistle, and the second, based on the gospel. Let us start with the first. The collect for today, which is actually one of the oldest in the prayer book, probably dating back to the mid-fifth century, and Pope St. Leo the Great himself, and the epistle for today contain vestiges of early church practice during Easter time. As I've mentioned a few times already, the period of Lent was a time of preparation for catechumens, pagans who put their faith in Jesus Christ and decided to follow him as Lord and Savior, to be formally incorporated into him and his church in the waters of holy baptism, which would occur on Easter even. So the church prays in this collect that those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion would avoid those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. The epistle picks up on this very theme. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. The archaic word there, conversation, means behavior. This all ties back into what we heard on Easter Day from Colossians chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. We, as Christians, are called to live a new life. When we were baptized, whether as infants or adults, we died with Jesus and rose with him. The old has passed away. God began a new work in our hearts that he is slowly bringing to completion through the continual outpouring of his divine grace in the sacraments by the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. And so we are exhorted not to impede the work of the Holy Ghost by living wicked, rebellious, and ungodly lives. One of the ways which St. Peter, in the epistle, exhorts his readers to show forth this new l'esprit de la vie, this spirit of life, is in how they comport themselves in regard to their leaders. He writes, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the King. I think this passage is especially relevant to us today in 
In light of the ever tiresome stay-at-home orders, we here in Maryland and some other states have been asked to endure. As easy as it is to get angry at our elected leaders for their failings, both real and perceived, in this and other areas, we do need to remember not only that they need prayer, regardless of who they are and what party they're with, but also that they are God's ministers in a certain sense, and therefore to be honored and obeyed, obviously up to a point. The Blessed Apostle St. Paul expounds on this very idea in Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending upon this very thing. It's a longer passage, but I thought it should be quoted at, at length because it's so profound. And it's very interesting that St. Paul is writing this to the church in Rome, where he has, according to the Acts of the Apostles, uh, made his way to have an audience with Caesar uh, himself, and Paul, of course, ends up dying as, as a martyr in, in Rome. So he, he doesn't change his tune, uh, knowing the inevitable outcome of his meeting uh, with Caesar, that it will probably end in death. He still is insistent upon uh, honoring uh, the governors and rulers that be, saying that they are there because God put them there. There's an old saying that I like. I heard it once at a funeral here at church. Years ago, there was a, a parishioner who died, a, a lady by the name of Florence Lawrence, wonderful lady, and um, her uh, son was in charge of her estate and, and managing and taking care of everything with the funeral, and he used to, and it was a ton of work, and he had all of these family difficulties and things to navigate, uh, as often happens in these situations. And he used to look at me and say, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. I love that saying. And I think it's true of a lot of our elected leaders, our governors, for instance. These men and women were, and still are in many ways, facing a completely unknown enemy. So I think it would behoove us to try to be generous with them and perhaps give them a break and assume that they were and are only trying to be prudent and fulfill their duty to serve the public and keep us, keep us all safe. So in these difficult times, and it does look like they are starting to change for better here and elsewhere, let us remember always to honor and pray for our elected leaders. Uh, elected leaders, even if sometimes they annoy us, which is, happens quite a bit, they're not there solely by our voting process, according to scriptures, but ultimately, and as strange as it may seem, by the invisible hand of God. That's the first thought, and now the second thought I have for us to consider is this, it's based upon the gospel. The Gospel for today is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning at the 16th verse. In its original context, it is, of course, our Lord revealing to his disciples that he will be parted from them and return to them. In other words, it's about his upcoming crucifixion, his death, his burial, and then his resurrection. So, we can think of this passage placed here on the the third Sunday after Easter in, in a couple of ways. 
we're uh, going back and meditating on, on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But also, the passage is here because we are now looking forward to the next season of the Christian year, Ascension Tide. We're going to think about how Jesus, and we'll see this in a lot of the scripture readings coming up for the rest of Easter, they all have to do with Jesus leaving his, his disciples. What is happening is we're being set up for the Ascension Day, when Jesus ascends into heaven. Well, we're going to have plenty of time over the next few weeks to unpack all of the fascinating and important theology behind the Ascension. Jesus departing from this earthly life and ascending into heaven to intercede for us uh, at the right hand of God. But what I, I do want to just touch on briefly is this general idea of separation. The disciples are going to be separated from Jesus at his crucifixion and his death and his burial. And then they will again be separated from him when he ascends into heaven. I think this idea of separation relates a lot to our spiritual lives and our community here at St. Albans. Listen in particular to these words of Jesus. A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Does this not perhaps characterize our feelings as a parish family during these difficult days? We are separated from one another, not able to embrace, shake hands, and fellowship in person. That's just the way it is right now. And while the restrictions may slowly loosen up over the next few weeks, will we not forever, or at least for a while, be changed by all of this? Absolutely. But one thing we can be sure of, we will be together again. For now we weep and lament, but our sorrow shall be turned into joy. In the meantime, as we are separate from one another, please continue to reach out, to pray for each other, call folk up and see how they're doing, send them an email. If you've been around here for a long time, please make a special effort to call and check in on some of the new people who've joined us over the last few months. I'm always happy to facilitate this and help with this any way that I can, like if you need someone's phone number, or uh, contact information. We are going to come out of this stronger as a parish family by the grace of Almighty God. We will come out of this with a deeper devotion to God and greater appreciation for all that he has done for us in Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are devoted to our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to know him and deepen our relationship with him. And nothing, not even stay-at-home orders or lockdowns, can prevent us from growing in grace by the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. God is not bound by stay-at-home orders. He may, in fact, be working in our lives over these past few weeks in a more powerful way than he's ever done so in the past and we'll only be able to see it in hindsight. May we just be open to him and continue to seek him during this time, all the while looking forward to the day our sorrow turns to joy and we are together again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. 
Alleluia. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, 
a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserve my body and soul for his everlasting life. The blood of our Lord. Which was shed for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance, that Christ died for thee, and he not him in thy heart by faith, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. A prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen.
shall not see me. Alleluia. Again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and to do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. We beseech thee, O Lord, that this sacrament which we have received may both strengthen our bodies and quicken our souls, through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Blessed Lord and faith be Jesus Christ, on his throne and glory, in the most holy sacrament of the altar, and in the hearts of his faithful people. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace, and may life perpetual shine upon them.